Hi guys, so this is going to be a video lecture on the essay 3 prompt. So if we go into the weeks 8 and 9 learning module here, and we scroll down, we will find our prompt. So we just click on it, enable editing, here we go. Alright, so this is going to be our literary analysis paper. Um, you can see the due date there. Um, so the text that we're going to be reading for this unit, Edgar Allan Poe, The Cask of Amontillado, Charlotte Perkins Gilman, The Yellow Wallpaper, and Why I Wrote the Yellow Wallpaper, Susan Glassbell's Trifles, Philip Roth's Defender of the Faith, and Amiri Baraka's Dutchman. So please note here that the, the use of quotations and italics is correct here. The only text that gets italics are Trifles and Dutchman because they're plays. Notice everything else is in quotes because they're short stories or in this one's an article. Okay, so for your essay, I don't expect, I, I expect you guys to not have any errors on, on that. You never use both quotes and italics, only one or the other, and this is the correct way to use it. Okay, so your task. You will choose one or more of the above texts and come up with a creative, insightful, and original interpretation of your chosen text. A good way to think about this assignment is to ask a critical question of one or more texts and answer the question in a sustained argumentative essay. Your thesis then, uh, your thesis statement then, should be a concise answer to your critical question and the body of the essay will serve to prove or support your thesis using textual evidence and close reading. You may either choose uh, one of the critical questions outlined below, combine one or more of the questions as you see fit, or create your own from scratch. I would recommend running your idea by me if you decide to change or create your own question to ensure that you are formulating an arguable thesis instead of making a personal observation about the text. So in a nutshell, what you should do is ask yourself a, cr a critical question. And this means not a yes or no question, but something that when you answer it, it will be an argumentative statement. And so below, I have created a bunch of critical questions for you. Um, they're all right here on the first page. You are more than welcome to use one of the questions that I've created, or you can change it a little bit or, or combine them, whatever you want, okay? The questions that I've created here for you are simply to guide you, and if you'd like, you can use them, all right? So um, this is really, these are really all essay topics, if you will. So sample question here, how does one or more of our authors portray the plight, oppression, or inferiority of women? Perhaps consider what larger statement do you think these authors are trying to make about how their characters' respective societies treat women? How do our authors depict the power struggle between men and women? So if you choose that question, you can choose some of that question, you can choose all of those questions, really anything you want. Again, this is simply to guide you in your topic. Okay, and I've written down the authors that correspond to these questions. So we have a question on class privilege. These three authors talk about that. Um, uh, several characters grapple with be being morally sound. Okay, what role do children play? How does death impact our characters? How do our authors conceptualize madness? How do our authors either work or conf uh, work against or confirm stereotypes? How does Philip Roth treat religion in his text? He's going to be talking about Judaism. So again, there's lots of different ways that you can go with this paper. And I know some people get a little bit um, anxious be with open-ended prompts, which is why you are more than welcome to choose one of these topics and run with it. However, if you're someone who is not anxious at all and actually likes more freedom, Again, you're welcome to choose one of them that's already here, or you can go in a completely different direction. It's completely up to you. Um, now, a little bit about our text, just so you know what we're getting into. Edgar Allan Poe's The Cask of Amontillado um, talks about two friends, um, and one of the friends, Fortunato, has committed a serious, you know, uh, betrayal against Montresor. And Montresor decides to take revenge. Okay, so we get to see what happens there. Gilman's The Yellow Wallpaper. Um, this is semi-autobiographical, and she explains that in Why I Wrote the Yellow Wallpaper. She's talking about the rest cure, and um, basically the narrator is unnamed in the story, which is important to note. 
and uh, our narrator gets taken to a summer house or what she thinks is a summer house and she describes the room that she gets locked into and her husband is a doctor and has diagnosed her with a nervous disorder and so we get to see what happens when she gets locked in the room and her progression of insanity. It's a brilliant text. Susan Glassbell's Trifles is also, I mean all these texts are great, but um, this is a play and it is set um, as a murder scene, a crime scene. So um, the, the wife in the story, Mrs. Um, Mrs. Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T, is the main suspect in the murder of her husband. And so when the men of the town come to investigate the crime, they go upstairs they go upstairs to investigate the crime scene while the women stay downstairs and you know go through the trifles quote unquote so um, we get to see who really solves the crime and uh, when these people do solve the crime what do they do about it it's really really intriguing this one has a lot of symbolism you guys so you really need to read into every single symbol that you come across um, if you don't, the text will seem almost as if nothing happens. Okay, so this one is really, you know, you have to, you have to dig beneath the surface. Philip Ross, Defender of the Faith. Um, this text is, um, it's really, really good. It's about, um, some soldiers who are, who are deployed, and there's a young, a young soldier named Grossbart, and a sergeant named Marx, and they're both Jewish, and, um, we get to see how Grossbart treats his Sergeant Marks. Um, Grossbart believes he deserves special treatment because of his religion. And so we get to see what plays out between the two of them. There's a lot of manipulation, a lot of revenge. Um, it's a very good text. Dutchman by Amiri Baraka. Um, this is in the set in the 1950s or 60s. Um, and it's about one black man and one white woman and they're sitting on a train car, and the whole text happens, uh, takes place on that train car. And so we get to see what happens when, when the woman starts flirting with the guy, and uh, it, it, it quickly escalates, and so uh, we get to see what happens between those two. So there should be something in there for everybody. Um, there's so much that you can talk about, and so many different ways you can pair these texts if you want to talk about more than one. All right? So let's skip down here. So you need to explain your interpretation of one or more of the texts in a clear and thorough manner. Explain how you arrived at your interpretation using evidence and close reading. And we will do an exercise on close reading. Have a debatable, arguable thesis statement. Avoid summar simply summarizing. Avoid, avoid simply paraphrasing. Use textual evidence to support your points. This is most important, and include sufficient analysis of the questions used, uh, of the quotations used, excuse me. Do not simply drop a quotation in your essay just for the sake of using it. Make the quotations work for you. Integrate your quotes into your own sentences and explain how the quote helps to support the main, uh, the point you are making in your body paragraph. Have body paragraphs which directly support your thesis in a logical and clear manner. The body paragraph should be fully developed ideas that link back to the overall thesis of the essay. Have a creative title, please, okay? Remember the grade is assigned after the final paragraph. Don't tail off at the end of your paper. Give yourself enough time to finish with a flourish. Adhere to MLA, this is the proper header. Um, include a works cited page and be three to five pages in length, okay? So again, you're really just analyzing a piece of literature or a couple pieces of literature and explaining your interpretation and using evidence to support your points. That's really what you're doing. Now on Blackboard, we go back in our learning module here. You'll notice um, there's a rubric and there's two sample essays here. Both of these essays scored very, very high. Um, if we look at this first one, This one it talks about the madness question, okay? So the introduction, uh, this person starts off by talking about madness and then goes into a discussion of the text that she's using and then has a thesis statement. That is a perfect structure for the intro. A background on your topic, 
introduce the text and then your thesis. And then you guys can read this through. Each body paragraph has a succinct point that relates to the thesis. She's using quotes and she has thorough analysis. So this one's on madness if you're interested in that kind of topic. Um, well, you should read it anyways, but that one's on madness. And then the second one here, this one's really interesting. Not, not saying the first one isn't, but this one's interesting as well. This is talking about the use of music in the text. So this is a good example of, of how to create your own critical question, okay? So this person uh, decided that music was an important theme in the text. So he talks about music in the, in the beginning of the intro, and then goes on to talk about um, the two texts. He uses Dutchman and Trifles, and then he goes on to um, have a thesis statement. In the plays Dutchman by Baraka and Trifles by Glassbell, music serves as a balance in life and a positive influence to its surroundings. So notice here that this is a clear interpretation of the text. He's explaining how music serves in the text. And this is arguable, right? Um, we can view music completely differently in these texts, as you will notice once you read them. And then again, he goes on in every paragraph to make a solid point with evidence and analysis. So again, those two um, essays are up there on Blackboard for you. Um, again, you're welcome to use one of these critical questions or create your own, whatever you would like to do. All right, so if you have any questions, please post to the Q&A discussion board.